Good morning, Christ Church International. This is your pastor, Pastor Daryl John Geddes, and these are your CCI announcements for August the 9th, 2020. Proverbs 17.22 says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Hey, we've got some medicine for you this morning. Christian doctor said, Your recovery was a miracle. Christian patient responds, Thank God, now I don't have to pay you. <laughs> the church is struck by lightning. The insurance company refuses to pay out for damages incurred as there is a specific disclaimer <clears throat> clause for an act of God, which amongst others, lightning is classified as. The priest goes to every household and asks for a donation to rebuild the church. One Christian farmer protested, I'm sorry, pastor, but I can't give some money to somebody who burned his own house. <laughs> During a Sunday school lesson, a child learned about how God created human beings. The child became especially focused when the teacher explained how Eve was created from Adam's ribs. Later in the week, the boy's mother saw him lying down on the floor, so she asked him, Son, what's wrong? His reply was priceless. Mom, I have a pain in my side. I think I'm getting a wife. The real is back. That's right. You heard me. I said it. The real is back. They have changed to a Zoom format, but they are just as real as they've ever been. They are providing real encouragement for real unusual circumstances during a real unique time. Join them on Saturday, August 22nd at 7 p.m. Additional information will be provided via Planning Center and the CCI website. That's right, the real is back. We restarted our face-to-face -face services on Sunday, July the 5th, and things have been going pretty smoothly since then. Just wanted to reacquaint you with some of the things that we have put in place to make sure that our services are as safe as possible. First of all, for those of you who don't feel safe attending a face-to-face -face service at this time, for our seniors and for those with compromised immune systems, please don't feel pressure to attend. You can pick up the live stream of our service on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We are asking all attendees to wear a mask, and we are asking that each person submit to having their temperature taken when they come into the church sanctuary. After having your temperature taken, we would ask that you adjust your mask, visit one of the two sanitizing stations, and sanitize your hands before entering into the sanctuary and sitting in one of the seats that have been designated so that we can observe a six-foot rule during uh, the congregational time. We're asking that all participants wear their mask during the worship experience. We will maintain our four different giving options, and we also will have an offering plate at the doors as you are leaving the sanctuary. Last but not least, at the conclusion of our service, attendees will be dismissed section by section, row by row. We are asking that you do not linger in the foyer, but that you head out to the parking lot, get into your car, and go to your respective homes. Thanks so much for understanding. We just want to be safe as we meet face to face. We're going to break away right now for our second installment of Coping with COVID.
this is your pastor, Pastor Daryl John Geddes, and this is our second installment in Coping with COVID. And we're here today with uh, Frances Patricia Wingate, and she's going to uh, answer just a few questions for us and let us know how she's been coping with uh, COVID-19. Frances, what has been your reaction to the new reality created by, COVID, by the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, it's um, unfortunate. However, um, because of the pandemic, um, for safety's sake, you stay in. Yeah. You take the necessary precautions. Mm -hmm, for, in mm -hmm. for instance, wearing a mask when you go out, um, wearing gloves when needed. But other than that, um, it really has not affected me that much. Okay, okay. Uh, I still go to the grocery store. Okay. I still take my neighbors, All right. Um, but they know that we wear masks Okay. <laughs> uh, where they have to go. And so it, it really hasn't changed that much because I'm really doing the same things I was doing before, only now I'm wearing a mask. Okay. All right. All right. So you're wearing a mask. The distinction, she's wearing a mask. Yeah. So what, what do you think, what has been your greatest challenge, the greatest challenge you've had uh, surrounding COVID-19? Well, I really haven't had any challenges. Okay, okay. Because, um, like I said, when I go out mm -hmm. and I take my neighbors out, we wear masks. Okay. You might not, I might not go out as often okay. as I did before. Okay. But I'm still at liberty to go out. Okay. okay. But you just, I just take the necessary precautions okay. depending where I have to go. I got you. And depending where I have to take my neighbor. Okay. We, they know if they call and say, can you take me thus and thus? I said, yes, I can. Do you have your mask? Okay. So it really hasn't changed that much for me. Okay. What do you see as the spiritual implications? How do you how do you see COVID nineteen with a with your spiritual lenses on? How, how do you see it? The Lord is getting out, trying to get our attention. Thank you. Thank you. Say that again. <laughs> the Lord is trying to get our attention. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. And I think you're familiar with the um, prophecy that David Wilkerson. Yes. 34 years of 30, 34, 35 yes. years ago. Yes. It has come to pass. It's come to pass. You know, when at the time when he said it, you could say, oh, that's not going to happen. Right, right. But it has happened. Yeah. Everything is shut down. Yes. Uh, yes. No if, ands, or buts. Yeah. So the Lord is trying to get our attention. One of the things that um, my mm. prayer partner and I was encouraged me to, we've mm. been reading Second Chronicles 7 14, not just. Um, 14. Yeah. We're reading the entire chapter. Sure, sure. And we're praying as we read it. Hallelujah. We read it every day <laughs> yes. and we're praying. Yes. But the last part of that uh, 14 is um, because people are disobedient. Yes. These are the things that are, that come upon. That come upon. Yeah. Well, it, it's so interesting that you uh, alluded to David Wilkerson's quote. I used that quote in a sermon that I did. Uh, not too long ago, I can't remember which sermon it was, but he did. He predicted that there was going to be a a pandemic that would come upon the world, the world, and that it would hit New York, and it would disable New York. And so I'm in complete agreement with you that this pandemic is God trying to get our attention. attention. Yeah. What, what do you think God wants from us, especially from the church? To repent. To repent. Yes. <laughs> to repent. Yes. Ask for forgiveness. Yes. In fact, the other thing I was thinking of, uh, you know I'm big on witnessing. Yes. Uh huh. And it's just not your form no more. Yes. That's right. What fruit are you going to come to the cross mm. with? Mm. Other than your family, who else have you witnessed to? Yes. You know, even on the telephone, if I have to make a telephone company, a call to a company, case in point Verizon. Yeah. By the time I finish talking to the young lady, I know her name. Okay. <laughs> My question is, where do you fellowship? Okay, okay, good, And good. they hesitate. But nine out of ten, I said, would you mind if I had a word of prayer with you? Mm. Mm. I've never been turned down. Mm. Mm. But our responsibility in the midst of all of this, yes. witness is even more urgent. Yeah. Because we're going to be responsible. That's, that's right. We just can't sit and twiddle our thumbs. That's right, that's what are you right. What say to the Lord? Yeah. You know, I couldn't do this. No, we all have a mission. Yes. And I pray that the Lord would give us holy boldness. Yes. To be able to do this because we're going to have to give an account during this time. Yes. It's um, it's vital. Yeah. It's crucial that we witness during this time. Yes. It's up to each individual. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you, uh, Francis. And 
And I really believe that God is trying to get the church's attention. Yes. And he's trying to bring us to a place of repentance yes. where we acknowledge, you know, our disinterest in the things of God. We've been more interested in what God can do for us exactly. than what we could in turn do for, do for God, you and know. And he wants us to, you know, um, the song didn't create us to worry or, yes. or to have fear, but he created us to worship him. Yes. But we as a church, you know, sometimes you say to the people, stand up, and what do they do? Sit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Obedience. Yes. He yes. wants obedience from us. Yes. That's all. Obedience. Yes. Obedience. He'll do the rest. Mm. But we have to do our part. That's powerful. He's done all that he has to do. Yes. Now it's up to us to be obedient to the word of God and yeah. to do what thus saith the Lord for, to you as an individual because we all have a mission. Yes. I know there are, this is just me, I know mm -hmm. there are people in the church who have testimonies, but they sit on them. Yes. Yes. But the testimony on um, Sunday, yeah. it struck the heart. Yes, it did. Yes, it, it did. It struck the heart, and people were talking about it. I got phone calls wow. in regards to it. Wow. <laughs> they needed to hear it. Yes. They needed to hear that testimony. That's powerful. So if people would just open up. Yes. Don't be ashamed of what the past, what the past, you know, this mm -hmm. is the future. Mm -hmm. You know, the past is the past. Yes. There's nothing Woo. you can do about it. That's powerful. Well, let me ask you one more question. So, so you've been reading, you and your prayer partner have been reading through 2 Chronicles mm -hmm. chapter 7. Okay. Not just 7.14, oh, but no, the, the entire chapter. chapter. So let me ask you this. What do you believe will happen if the church truly repents? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Azusa Street. Yes. Azusa Street. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about hand clapping. Yes. Foot stomping. Yes. <laughs> Pew jumping. Yes. Shannon is swinging. <laughs> Revival. A revival. Yes. But it's the church. It's the church's responsibility. Not the building, the people in the yes. church. We are the church. Yes. That's what he wants from mm, us. Mm, mm. That's what he wants from us. Yes. To repent, to get back to Azusa Street. Yes. Woo. And you would see a change. Yes. Souls will come in. When I came Sunday wow. and I was able to hear the sermon mm. outside and the music outside, I said, that's it. Mm. That's it. Let folks know yes. that there's something different about Lake and 13. Yes. <laughs> this is powerful. Yeah. This is so powerful. And and I really believe that 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 uh, God is calling us back to himself. Our superintendent, our si assistant superintendent, um, Rick DeBose, mm -hmm. he, he said something, and, and I've tried to practice it, and I've challenged our congregation to, to practice it uh, as well. He said, you'll never have another season like COVID-19 mm -hmm. where we're forced to stay in. And he said, while we stay in, we need to lean in to God and lean in to our families. And he said, if we'll do that, God will take care of COVID-19. That's right. And, and, and Francis, I appreciate meeting with you today. I appreciate uh, the fact that, that God has spoken to you as he's spoken to me about the necessity of the church repenting. And not only the church repenting, that if we repent, if we fall on our faces, if we humble ourselves. We need to get back to fasting. Yes, and fast and pray. And I know everybody can't fast medical reasons. Right, whatever, right. But fasting. Yes. You want to beat the devil? Yeah. <laughs> you want to beat Come the on, devil? Come on now. Come on. Fast. Fast. And when he comes against you, what do we have? The word. Yes. We use the word. It's That's not right. The, the word. That's right. We'll That's beat right. him down. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Francis, thank you so much. This has just been so great. And this is your pastor, and this has been our second installment of Coping with COVID. And you heard it from Francis Wingate's mouth. Repent, That's right. and God will visit us. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Praise the Lord. For more information, as always, we challenge you to log on to our website, ccilife.org, where you will find links to your online sermons, online giving, and to all of our other social media networks. This has been your pastor, Pastor Daryl John Geddes, and these have been your Christ Church International Announcements. I sincerely hope that you enjoy the rest of our service. This is a victory.